CNA is sentenced for giving residents her own anti-anxiety medication. Longtime nursing home antagonist calls for more money for staffing, and the health care violence bill advances. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A CNA who gave residents her own Klonopin will perform community service and serve probation. Gloria Wellburn, 61, who worked at Golden Living Center in Evansville, Indiana, received an 820-day sentence last week, but it was suspended. Wellburn was arrested in February on allegations of giving her personal medication to residents in 2017. Three residents had behavioral issues resulting from taking the Klonopin, an anti-anxiety drug that was mixed in with their drinks. Blood tests confirmed the drug in the residents' bodies. Wellburn originally denied giving the medications to residents, but said she had been stressed due to residents showing disruptive behaviors and later admitted giving the medication. Another nurse also may face charges for knowing about Wellburn's illegal dispensing, but failing to report it immediately, the Attorney General Office said. The nurse told investigators she had thought Wellburn had told her she had given the residents medication, but had originally thought Wellburn was joking. While a resident advocacy group and nursing home industry lobbyists may disagree on most subjects, a new report indicates that they might find common ground in one area, staffing. Families for Better Care has long been a thorn in the long-term care industry side, having frequently accused certain states of providing poor nursing home care. But the organization is now calling for a, quote, new solution, said Executive Director Brian Lee. He says that the best way to heal America's nursing homes is to appropriate additional funding to be used solely for hiring more staff. In the past two years, the National Report Card has found residents are receiving an average of less than two hours and 33 minutes of direct care each day. Most states experienced a net loss in the percentage of nursing homes with above average staffing levels over the past three report cards. We'll be back right after this break. Legislation that would require employers to have a prevention plan for workplace violence has moved forward after being marked up in committee. The Workplace Violence Prevention for Healthcare and Social Service Workers Act, H.R. 1309, sponsored by Representative Joe Courtney, the Democrat from Connecticut, was voted out of the House Committee on Education and Labor last Tuesday. Workplaces covered under the bill include skilled nursing facilities, hospice, hospitals, residential treatment facilities, group homes, and federal health care facilities, including those ran by the Veterans Administration. Minimum requirements for the facility's workplace violence prevention plans include staffing for patient care, unit-specific assessments, record-keeping, and more. Nurses who spoke in support of the legislation noted that violence can happen in any health care environment. OSHA currently has a voluntary guideline program, which committee chairman Representative Bobby Scott, the Democrat from Virginia, said is not working. He says that the rates of serious injuries to our nation's caregivers from workplace violence are rising nearly every year. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.